Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Open Simon webinar series. I want to make sure that everyone can hear me okay. So, if anyone can uh, let me know in some way, either come off mute or uh, put it in the chat. Uh, I can hear you fine, Erin. Thanks, Andy. I appreciate that. So, for those who might be new to this uh, series, Open Simon is a learning engineering community working to improve uh, learning outcomes for all. And this series is meant to provide instruction and examples and demonstrations of learning engineering techniques and tools, and just to celebrate best practices in applied learning science all, overall. Today, we have with us David Guerin, who is a professor of chemistry at Carnegie Mellon University, and Sandy Razor, who is a director of Chem Collective, which is a, uh, a part of our Open Simon Toolkit. And they're here to talk about um, their open chemistry courseware. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Sandy or, uh, or David to present. Um, I'll be watching the chat, so feel free to um, put questions in the chat as we go. And uh, there'll be time for question and answer after as well. So Sandy, you ready to take it away? Sure. Okay, let me... Uh, Get the screen from you. Oh, yeah, let me stop my share. Your microphone's sounding a little like you're underwater to me. Oh, sorry. Maybe I just need to speak up a little bit. Well, there's uh, there's some interference, it seems. Oh, um, let me log off and log back on. Okay. And see if that helps. So we'll wait for Sandy. I guess I'll talk about what the Chem Collective and what our work is uh, about. So for um, since around 2000, we have had a website we call the Chem Collective, which is really where we put all of our chemistry development materials. Um, I'm a faculty member in the chemistry department and uh, started to develop educational software. Our most uh, used product was a virtual lab or is a virtual lab for chemistry. Um, and students get to design and carry out their own experiments. And it's also configurable so people can build their own uh, experiments into that. It's good at night, it's a very flexible environment. Uh, but it also, that comes with the cost that your students don't know what to do. There's not a lot of support for them. So it's kind of like putting students into a real lab. If they don't know what to do, you have to find other ways to support them. Um, and more recently, we uh, developed a fully uh, online set of a, a full set of courseware for introductory chemistry courses using the Open Learning Initiative platform, and I think that's one of the things. And that's what Sandy's going to mostly talk about today. So, give your mic. Okay. I'm, I'm back. Is that better? No, unfortunately. No. Um, let me call in. Oh. Sorry about that. Yeah, that might work better. There's not that many of us on. Now? Should we go around and just say quickly who we are and what our interests are? What do you think, Aaron? Is Are we waiting for Sandy still? I was going to say, Aaron, do you want to, we could go around, uh, take the time to sort of have everyone just say quickly, who they yeah, are. We could do that. That would be that would be fantastic. So, Who wants to start? <laughs> we could just go down the line here. I'll start if that's okay. I'm fantastic. I'm Caroline Silver. I'm from Carlo University. I'm one of three members of our instructional design department, and I'm just interested to see. I've been kind of part of the whole um, Simon initiative for a few years now and I'm kind of interested to see how this is developing and how I can possibly bring it back to my university. Would you be interested, sorry to interrupt, would you be interested in nursing chemistry and developing a course for allied health, for uh, chemistry for allied health? Uh, um, actually, that would not be my call, but I can definitely bring it back to those people who are um, in that department and see if that's of interest to them. Great, thanks. So if you could send me an email, that would be great. I can put in the chat my email address. Great, thanks. Hi, I'll go next. Uh, it's Kenneth Chapman. I'm Vice President of Market Research uh, at D2L. 
Um, so I'm just deeply interested in, in what educators are doing to use data and what kinds of things we can be advocating for with our customers. And um, I love the Open Simon Initiative. So I just, you know, I like geeking out on what, uh, what you're doing. Hi, I'm Gideon. You can see me under Lisa DW, my wife's computer. I'm, a, I'm actually a math guy at Western Governors University. We're always looking into interactive online stuff. So I wanted to see what was going on in chemistry. Great, nice to have you. Who was who that again? This is Kim. You know the great person? The, was, um, I didn't catch his name. It sounded like a familiar voice of someone I knew from Western Governors. That's uh -huh. <laughs> well, now that you're speaking, Kim, why don't you? <laughs> yeah, so, I'm Kim Larson. I'm with Can I interrupt you for just a second? I want to make sure that my mic, I'm, I'm on the phone now. Is that better? It is. Okay, great. Sorry about that. That's okay. Kim, you want to continue? Sure, I'm Kim Larson. I'm with OLI. I'm a learning engineer. I guess I'm with Simon too. Sorry, OLI and Simon. Anyone else want to introduce themselves? I seem to have lost controls. Um, I can I can go ahead and get started. Okay, Aaron, great. If that's okay. Yeah, it seems like folks are uh, done sharing. Thanks, everyone. Um, I saw someone, uh, Kristen Yeager, also put something in the chat that she's from Heinz College. Thank you. Oh, cool. Okay, great. Take it away, Sandy. Sure. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, just to give you an idea of, of what we're going to go over today, uh, we're going to take a quick look at the chemistry course, talk about the features, and kind of give an overview. Uh, the chemistry course incorporates uh, many different OER elements, and we'll walk through a module and uh, kind of show you uh, those different elements um, and talk a little bit about um, how we incorporate those and uh, you use OLI best practices in developing the content. Um, another thing we're going to look at today is how to uh, use the data from the course um, to inform uh, your classroom activities, as well as uh, using the data to be able to see uh, student learning and See, I'm kind of using little quotes there, um, but, but we'll take a look at that as well uh, within the course. Uh, so just kind of a quick overview of the features that we'll be looking at, um, and then we'll jump right into a module, and I'll kind of point these out um, as we move along. Um, so the course is fully integrated. What I mean by that is that you, know, you, you do have text, uh, but the activities are woven um, within the text. Uh, there are summative assessments at the end, um, but um, unlike the way that uh, many courses are set up in an LMS um, where, you know, there's a link to this thing and then a link to that and then a link to something else, um, everything is, is um, kind of in one place in a nice uh, flow. Um, as you'll see, uh, there's interactive um, interactivity throughout um, a lot of activities. We've incorporated the virtual labs, uh, FET simulations, um, many different types of activities. Uh, we'll take a look at the scaffolding um, in the course, which is um, important um, in terms of OLI best practices, um, as well as uh, targeted and detailed feedback. Um, as I mentioned, we, we have um, incorporated the virtual labs. Um, Dave mentioned those briefly. Um, there are also some adaptive assessments uh, we'll take a quick look at. Um, and there are summative kind of traditional uh, quizzes um, like you would see in, in most places. Um, so those are the kind of main features we're going to take a look at. 
so this is the first semester chemistry course. <clears throat> and um, I just caught a, what a few folks said in terms of their introduction. Um, it doesn't sound like most people um, you know, are, are chemistry people, uh, but I think this should give you a nice idea of, of what um, you can do um, with this uh, courseware. Um, so this is the first semester content. Um, I wanted to look at uh, the stoichiometry module. So if you took chemistry, you may remember stoichiometry. You may have really liked it, and maybe you didn't. <laughs> um, but uh, it is a, a, you know important kind of a core concept that, that's covered uh, usually pretty early on in in your first semester of general chemistry. Um, you can see that there are uh, many activities throughout the page. So there, there's you know, a relatively small amount of text. Uh, you have a worked example um, and an activity. Um, on this page, uh, a little bit more going on on this page, uh, we have our more, you know, our traditional work example, um, but we also have these um, interactive examples. Um, so this particular um, example is developed in um, H5P, that is an open um, education resource that anybody can use, make an account, um, and do different interactive elements um, such as this. So we wanted a way um, to, you know, to have the work examples, there's um, a lot of research out there that, that worked examples are important in student learning, um, but we wanted it to be a bit more interactive. Um, so um, this is uh, what we developed for our interactive work examples. We don't have these for um, every example, um, but generally speaking, some of the more challenging type of problems, we, we use these interactive examples. So they have kind of a strategy here, um, and it works them through the problem. Um, but there is kind of the static, traditional version. Um, so a student has a choice as to what, um, you know, what works best for them, really. Um, so we talked a little bit about scaffolding. So um, this is an example of scaffolding. So the learn by doing, generally speaking, there's, you know, there's some amount of content to um, try and teach them something. Um, and then they're gonna start practicing very quickly as opposed to you know, read all of these 10 pages and then do something, try to do something with that. Uh, it's gonna be a small amount of content um, and then some scaffolded practice. Um, so these types of problems get set up in this format. So here the scaffolding is in the form of um, the, the way the problem is structured. So they're going to set this up first. And once they get it all set up, then it tells them to do um, the calculation here. Remember, off the top of my head, that's 4.4. .4. Um, so then we're going to um, we're going to you know take away some of that scaffolding, but here we do still have scaffolding. So generally speaking, the learn by doing activities are scaffolded. Those can be scaffolded in the way that they're structured, like this problem, or they can be scaffolded with hints. So here, the hints kind of tell them the process that they need to use in order. Um, to do the problem correctly. Um, for incorrect answers, um, the, for multiple choice, um, we, we do develop the answers that, you know, it's gonna be a common error. So here, this is the answer if they had um, kind of flip-flopped their ratio, um, this is the answer that they would have gotten and they get specific feedback in terms of, you know, that, that's what you did incorrectly. So you can see um, throughout the page, there are multiple of these learn by doing activities with the scaffolding. Um, and then um, ultimately we want them to be able to do these problems uh, without scaffolding. So we're going to get to more um, quiz-like problems. So these, as you can see, um, don't have scaffolding. 
um, if they put an incorrect answer in, they do actually get a little bit of scaffolding. Um, so this is the process. This is giving them the process to get to the correct answer. Um, if they get the incorrect answer um, twice, um, then they do get um, the full solution. So they're getting that um, targeted, immediate feedback, um, and then also uh, scaffolding throughout. Um, did want to mention that you know the video is also very easy to incorporate um, into the courseware. Um, this particular video and many of the videos, although um, some of them are a little bit different, but many of them are um, you know walkthroughs of a particular type of problem. So this is a, a walkthrough of, of this type of problem um, that they're doing on this page. Um, another thing that we incorporated a um, open education resource. Um, I think somebody mentioned that they were math. I, I know FET has um, some, some math simulations as well. Um, so with the FET simulations, we have you know, specific directions for them to do something with it, uh, as opposed to just a lot of, um, you'll see in a lot of open ed, they, they give them a link to it, but you know, just kind of like, here, see if you can learn something from this, but um, which, which they may, because actually these simulations are really, really cool, really great. Um, but, you know, I, I like to have a little bit more structure so you can kind of tell them um, what they should be looking for and what they should be learning. So these directions go along with um, the simulation, and then they have follow-up questions uh, related uh, to that. Um, I did want to mention, too, if anyone has a question as I'm going along or if there is, um, you know, something we're looking at, I kind of run through it too quickly and you're like, oh, yeah, I want to see a little bit more of that, um, please feel free to, to jump in and, um, and just let me know and, and we can take a closer look at whatever um, is interesting. Um, this is an activity um, this is actually a brand new activity. If any of you are familiar with the CTAC platform, um, this is a new uh, free form, uh, kind of free response type activity that we are developing. This is in the early development stages, so I don't want to get too deep into this. Um, but point being here that um, at OLI and Carnegie Mellon, we, we are always developing um, new applications and, and looking for ways to use those in education. Um, and this is a good example of this. This particular one is not in the um, course that's out there for public use right now because it's still, as I mentioned, um, in developmental uh, phases. But I did want to kind of point that out. My page is being a little bit slow here. Uh oh. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I was like, no, not more technical difficulties. Uh, so again, we can see that um, you know many problems throughout. Um, again, if you're familiar with chemistry, you probably or maybe remember titrations, or maybe are trying very hard to forget titrations. Um, but again, an, another kind of um, use case for the um, H5P um, little slideshow there for um, titrations. Uh, two other um, kind of interesting activities that are available. Uh, within the OLI platform. Let me reset some of these. Um, so this is, we, we've, we've done these at the end of some of the modules where we have um, a scenario. So this is um, kind of about rocket fuel and the chemical reaction that occurs for that. Uh, they have a problem that relates to that. Um, if they get this correct, which I'm going to try and remember what this is off the top of my head, but I probably won't. 
Oh, I did. Okay, so if they get it correct, um, they just move right along, um, and you know they're they're good to go. Um, let me reset this. And if they get it incorrect, um, then they get a follow-up question that helps them to get the correct um, answer. So basically, it turns a uh, did I get this activity, a question that doesn't have scaffolding, into a learn by doing activity, a question that has scaffolding. Um, so this one, it tells them, okay, um, let's, let's take a step back. Let's get the dimensional analysis set up first. Um, and then let's let's try that again. Um, so you know, same kind of situation here. Um, if we get the incorrect answer, then we get this follow-up question that okay, let, let's talk. Let's think about the steps that you need to take in order to get the correct answer there. Um, so that is also um, something that is uh, doable in the platform. Um, as I mentioned, you know, quiz quizzes pretty standard, so not too much exciting to show there. Um, I did want to show you the um, virtual labs. So within the um, course, uh, we have incorporated these virtual labs. Um, waiting for this to... I'm not sure why the virtual lab. Let me try and refresh this. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, so this particular virtual lab, um, this you know kind of describes a, a problem. Uh, this does give a procedure that opens in a separate tab for them, um, as well as a lab report sheet uh, that they can use as as they go along. So um, I don't remember exactly for this what they're supposed to be doing, but just to give you an idea how the virtual lab works, uh, we can pour, um, you know, some of this into there and let's get something else. Let's see, that was that. Let's pour some of this into there. Um, there's um, some things that, that change here. This actually um, looks like it produced a precipitate in there, so we can see the mass of the precipitate. Um, if the precipitate, if there's enough of it, you can actually see it on the screen. No, it's too, too small amount. Um, let's see if we add the rest of this in. Okay, anyway, you get the idea. Um, so the virtual lab activities um, are also um, incorporated um, in here. So, Sandy, we have, uh, yeah. we have a question in the chat about how, sure. the, how the virtual lab is created. Did you mention that? Um, so... Uh, Do you want me to, I can take part yeah, of it? Yeah, I think, I think that's a question for you. <laughs> so. Uh, there's uh, some XML files that uh, configure the laboratory and they determine things like uh, what chemicals are in there or, or in the simulation. Uh, something is uh, for, for chemists, they, it, can, it assumes all reactions immediately go to equilibrium. So it can do almost all of freshman chemistry except kinetics. So high school and introductory chemistry, you have it all covered except time dependent reactant. Reactions that take some time to go. We don't have that in the simulation. Um, and you specify what kind of chemicals are in you, you want to be in the simulation. You say what solutions you want to have in the stock room, and you can select what type of equipment you make available to the students. And um, we have a, a little bit. We're actually it's not built quite into OLI yet. We're working on randomized. Uh, oh, it's an HTML5. Uh, application it doesn't doesn't use it, it doesn't use angular or or any of the larger frameworks it's really almost pure html5 and it um and there's a super active there's a thing in all in open learning initiative where you're allowed to embed other pieces of software into the course they're called super activities and we have a super activity written 
so that you can put labs in and, and have uh, questions beneath it, and then they answer the question, and it goes into our database, and we sort of know how they did, and whether they got it right or wrong. Is that clear? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, I think that's all I wanted to go over in terms of the overview and kind of pointing out the different features in the course. Um, I do want to jump into uh, taking a look at um, data and seeing the student learning in more detail. But before we jump into that, is, is there any more questions related to, um, to what we just looked at? Okay, I am going to take that as a no. And yeah, Erin, feel free to interrupt me if anybody else does put anything in the chat um, because I can't see the chat when I'm sharing. Yeah, um, sure. No problem. I'm not sure how to do that <laughs> while I'm sharing. Yeah, it's not easy, so I'll, t I'll tell you. Yeah, okay. Alrighty, so um, we're in a different module. Uh, this is a module on the mole, um, a very fundamental uh, concept in chemistry. Uh, this is the first page of that particular module uh, dealing with formula mass. Um, this concept is not a particularly difficult concept for most students. Um, but we still do start out with a scaffolded uh, question. Um, here the scaffold is um, in the way of hints. And we can take a look at how the students did. Um, so this, this is actual, um, actual da data from um, a course that uh, we have an instructor that is in a community college that is using this. So this is actual student data. Um, and we can see that for this particular problem, you know, most of the students did pretty well um, initially. Um, as we looked at before, we kind of went from, um, you know, scaffolded to unscaffolded problems. So we started out um, where the problem was still scaffolded um, and they got about 81% correct for that activity. And, and then we kind of progressed to, um, and these are the unscaffolded problems, to 91% um, accuracy rate. So we can see that they're improving, um, even though they started at a pretty high rate, which um, as I mentioned, um, for this particular topic, I don't think would be surprising for most instructors because it's, it's not particularly difficult. Um, as we progress through the, um, through the module, we're going to um, progress with the difficulty as well, which is often the case. So here we're starting on this particular page, we're doing um, some conversions. So this is basically that the first part of that stoichiometry stuff that we were just looking at. Um, we're going to start with a scaffolded uh, problem. Um, students, um, you know, they, they don't know this so well starting out. Um, we do see some improvement over this particular um, series of activities that is um, heavily scaffolded. It's taking them through this process and kind of having them do each step um, one by one. Uh, these problems are also somewhat scaffolded in the way of, uh, again, the hints. Um, so, um, still scaffolded, but less scaffolded. Um, so we can kind of take a look at this. Um, there's still a, a kind of a similar uh, range there in, in terms of accuracy. Um, they make it to the, did I get this? Um, and their accuracy has increased significantly, so we can kind of see some, some learning um, happening there um, throughout the page. Um, similar um, on this page, so now we're going to a, a two-step um, dimensional analysis problem here. Um, we start with, with some kind of heavy scaffolding. Um, with this heavy scaffolding, they actually do you know, pretty well there. 
um, kind of pull away some of that scaffolding and, and they do less well. Um, but the um, final question that is unscaffolded um, indicates that, you know, that, that they have um, improved and, and they have um, learned, particularly from this um, slightly scaffolded um, to the unscaffolded um, problems. I um, wanted to skip over to um, an even more complex uh, concept, which, um, again, if you don't remember chemistry, um, well, even if you do remember some chemistry, you might not remember this one. But anyway, uh, this is a fairly complex for first year chemistry students, um, particularly at the community college level. So here we have something that's that's heavily scaffolded. So each of these steps is taking them through, you know, one part of this problem. So this is all one problem. They're just doing it piece by piece. Um, so in the dashboard, they, they do okay on that, kind of taking it piece by piece. Um, again, pulling away some of that scaffolding, um, the, the percent correct goes down um, somewhat, but, um, we can see there by the end that, that they have increased um, significantly and, and improved um, throughout um, the page. Um, this last page is, is interesting um, and I think um, really shows um, how you can use this uh, very easily in terms of, okay, well, what, what do I really need to focus on in class today? So if we go through this page, which is I'm um, pretty sure this is the last page of the module. So this is, you know, as is usually the case, we save the best for last. So um, again, we're going to start out with some scaffolding. Even with the fairly heavy scaffolding here, they're um, not doing real great. Um, we have another scaffolded, um, but less scaffolded problem. They do a little bit better. Oops. That. Um, and then on our final problem of the page, we take a look and whoa, whoa what happened here? Um, so, you know, point being here, okay, well, they didn't get to where, where we needed them to be, obviously. So, um, you know, this would tell you as an instructor, um, you know, likely, you know, maybe want to go over these particular problems and or some other problems that, that are very similar to these. So, you know, we could see the stuff at, at the beginning, um, something like formula mass. Again, if you're familiar, you'll, you'll kind of probably think about, oh, yeah, I would, I would think that they could get that pretty easily just from working through the problems, um, you know, going from that scaffolding to the unscaffolding by themselves, but, you know, likely something like this with the um, determining the empirical molecular formulas, more complex um, and something that you want to spend more time on in class. Um, and, you know, with using um, the online courseware, um, you can often um, decrease the time that it takes them to learn, particularly those easier things, and have more of that class time um, to spend on, on these more challenging problems that, that they have more difficulty with. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to show you in terms of um, being able to use this data to, um, to better direct uh, what you do in class. So I'm gonna stop sharing there and unless there was anything specific in this that anybody wanted to look at in more detail okay um so are there any any questions um related to that Or any questions at all about any of it? <laughs> okay, thank you, Sandy, so much. Does anybody have any? Uh, 
Any questions about what they've seen or about scaffolding or courses? Okay, well, thank you so much, Sandy. And that was so helpful to see how OLI courses are developed and particularly chemistry. And it's nice to see how you can monitor your students through the courses and see where more scaffolding is needed too. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, so. Sorry, I got I, my, my thing crashed there. One thing I wanted to say about that, I, it's occurring to me more and more. So we're gathering all of this data and I think it's a very different type than the data I'm used to normally like, you have quizzes that uh, so students are supposed to study on their own and then take a quiz and all of your data just relates to the point at which you're assessing them and we're having students answer questions that they're not supposed to be able to know how to answer this the, the kinds of it's in the course of places where there would normally be a worked example and we've replaced worked examples like in a textbook with uh, these highly scaffolded problems. So we're getting data on how long it takes students to learn it starting from zero or starting at least within our instructional. The, the students in my class are doing this. They start reading the module and we're getting data on how they're doing on questions right from the very beginning. So it's, it's an interesting new style of data. Thanks, David, for that insight too. Um, it's great to hear from the from the teacher perspective how this helps. Um, well, I should also say that we're I've tried in the past to do like read the textbook before you come to class and maybe do some questions on Blackboard, and the students rebel really don't, did not like it. Um, so I've never been able to do that. Uh, and this semester we're having them do the open learning initiative modules before class, and they're super. They like it a lot. It's an interesting shift because it's not, from a certain perspective, it's not that different than reading the textbook. But I do think the idea that these, right from the beginning, you have interactivity, it, it seems something about it. They actually, in, in um, focus groups with our teaching center, so they, they come in and talk to the students when we're not around. One of the things that came back from that is one of their favorite parts of the course is the open learning initiative modules. Not the quizzes at the end that we make them do and they get grades for, but the other part, just the learning part. They hate the quizzes as much as they hate every other quiz. <laughs> well, that's great to know though that you've done that, um, those type of polling with the students because I, I think it, it has been found that you know having I've heard from a lot of students that having that integrated reading and practice all in one and not having to go to different places for those things really helps um, it's a better experience and I think it helps with the learning as well well if anybody has any other questions or ideas they want to share or <laughs> anything at all um, otherwise, I think we're, we'll wrap up for the day. Don't be sure. Well, let me, I'll, I'll throw out some things we're looking for partners on. We're, uh, oh, good. we're doing, um, uh, working with community colleges, uh, California is, uh, we have a set there and they are, um, uh, using the open learning initiative things in their course. One, one thing I think is still lacking in this entire model is to, if, you, if you do move some of the, or you know, substantial part of the instruction online, what do you do in class? Uh, in the early days of people trying to flip, a lot of people would spend all of their time filming themselves talking, and they would just barely get that done, and then they'd walk into class to be like, okay, now what do we do? Um, so we're uh, working, on a proposal where we would create a collection of activities coupled to every module of the OLI and uh, give advice, ideally build into the 
the learning dashboard system advice on which of those activities they should do in their class. Um, that would be the long run. In the, in the short term, we're just going to get um, people working collaboratively to share these activities so everyone doesn't have to create them on their own. Uh, I know my, for me, I've been inventing, taking up quite a bit of time to come up with new things to do in class now that I don't have to, now that we're really genuinely flipped. Another one is um, for allied health students, we would like, um, we've been working on some things for high schools in California with West Ed as our partner. And there we've done scenario based modules. So and we're assuming they're getting most of the content instruction outside of the system. And so we're just having them in, embed the knowledge, the, the chemistry uh, knowledge in scenarios like cleaning up water or making an IV for patients. And it struck us that we, that might be really useful for allied health students. The sort of chemistry is never one of their favorite classes. And so mm -hmm. things where you would put it into the kinds of situations where uh, those careers use chemistry. Uh, but we need some partners for that. Um, and so Dave, I, uh, I just added my email uh, to the chat. So if anyone's interested in partnering, please reach out to me and I'll get you connected. And we do have a question in the chat about, um, are the students able to switch around or do they have to complete every page in order? They are allowed to do however they want, uh, which actually for our high school teachers has been an issue. Um, so we're not, we've, we have it as a request into the OLI platform people that we would like the option to gateway it. Were you asking that because you wanted to do it or because you were afraid we were doing it? <laughs> I, I kind of feel like the, at the college level, it's good to have that flexibility and allow them to, you know, if, it, if they feel like, you know, I, I don't need to do the rest of these problems, I got this, that they, you know, they, they should be able to move on. But yeah, as Dave mentioned, um, with these high school level activities that we're developing, um, the teachers actually would prefer a little bit more control over that and, and kind of makes them have to do um, each activity on the page before they move on. So I think that there definitely um, is the use case for, for either. Um, but yeah, the way it currently is, um, yeah, there, um, you can, as the instructor, um, set the visibility of the modules. So maybe, you know, you're not starting module five until next week. So you don't, you know, want to have it available to them until, you know, Friday before you started on Monday. So um, there, there is, um, you, you can do that. Um, but in terms of, yeah, having them, they have to finish everything on one page before they can move to the next. That's, that is not a capability in the platform um, right now. And for quizzes, how um, if they start taking a quiz, can they leave and come back, or is it kind of you're committing to finish this quiz once you start it? I believe you can leave and come back. I think there's there's lots of gating options around the quizzes in terms of you can set timing and uh, and. Um, all kinds of other things, uh, some other controls with the quizzes. Ours are short enough that they just do them. It kind of, this is replacing our, we, what we used to have an online homework system, we used to use Sapling. And so this, we used to have both the textbook and an online homework system, and now we just have this. And it seems that the students seem to, they're not asking for the other things. So. Yeah. Yeah, I should mention too, just in terms of the platform, um, particularly for, for math folks, that um, for the quizzes, um, there is the ability to parameterize um, the problems. So, you know, so that students are getting, you know, different problems um, from one student to another. Um, and if they decide to retake a quiz, they'll get, um, you know, different values within the same problem. Um, but that might be useful for folks to know. Great. 
Great. Is there anything else anyone is interested in in terms of um, OLI as a platform or even course development? Um, any of those things around uh, courseware? Sandy and Dave, you've been working on this course how long? Um, probably, we just finished up the second semester, like the end of last semester. So a couple of years. Um, oh, oh, did we? Iteratively. Did we, remember, did we yeah. remember to say that it's, uh, you know, we started with OpenStax, um, the OpenStax. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's another, thanks for, mentioning that there's another open resource that we used and um yeah great starting point for for content for sure what domains are people are there so some people seem like they were from you know sort of a general view of their of their site and university but are there particular domains where you see a need for courseware of this type <laughs> I think we have plans for physics. They might depend on grants getting funded, but there's at least a plan for physics. We have statistics. There's one or the other high, high, high pole or like domains where people really would like to see more. Yeah, definitely check out our courseware count, um, our collection. I will. Uh, I'll actually go get the link right now and put it in chat. Yeah, what are the plans for algebra? I mean, we had years ago, 10, 10 years ago, there was an attempt to do math and it, it turned out to be harder than we thought, I guess. Uh, oh, there is a, yeah, someone put in, so there's one that's algebra and trigonometry. I don't, it would be, we mm -hmm. do have Carnegie Learning, which spun out of Carnegie Mellon has an algebra tutor. Um, this would, I think, would be quite a bit different than that, to sort of really, there hasn't been a lot of going down into K-12, but a lot of that algebra and trig is the thing that prevents students from doing well in college. And so yeah. uh, there has well, been- You have like college algebra too in, in many, at many schools. Yeah. Um, so. The, um, so as far as uh, problem solving, team building and general ed, that's a good question. Um, we have, uh, we started developing here at CME what we call sidecars, um, which are kind of mini courses meant to be part of a larger, um, a different course. So for example, we have Colab U, which is uh, collaboration skills that any other course could take advantage of. So say you're, you have an engineering course and you, you want students to work on a, on a project together you might give them this, um, this mini set of modules uh, called Colab U. Um, and we're also developing, I think, Conflict U as well, conflict management, um, to be able to put, make them complementary to other courses that might need those skills within the course. And it's worked out really well here at CMU. And those courses are available as well. One thing that we had this crazy idea, I, so I don't know if this, people probably need to go, but there's a, uh, the drama school here is really interesting in education as well. And if we were to do, um, could we go after the team building and things of that type by working with drama people To I was thinking of the just like in a, a cognitive tutor, these tutor technologies, we can, it's a rule-based system for simulating something that's complex. Could we simulate coworkers and have people as they're solving, working in a chemistry problem, especially in a virtual lab, interacting with some simulated coworker and give feedback on whether they're doing that. I like that. It's out there, it's out there at the crazy end, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's authentic, right? It gives an authentic experience, which is what we're always kind kind of looking for. So not only provide, but as students, those are the fun, you know, those are the fun activities. Yeah, at least that'd be, yeah, K-12. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, we do uh, have, 
As, as Dave mentioned, we're, we're actually working on um, chemistry. I'm, I'm not sure if you um, are specifically interested in the um, chemistry, Lisa, but um, the we do have not not this general chemistry course, but um, it's a different course that we're developing um, geared specifically toward high school chemistry. Um, so I can certainly send you um, some more information on that um, if you'd like. Do you mean uh, simulating simulations for use in K-12 or do you mean a simulation of teaching a K-12 class? Yeah, that's, yeah, there's these, mm. I guess you know about them, but there's the, yeah, what do you think of these? There, there's one where um, you actually, it's pretty expensive because there's a real human that is driving the simulated students. Do you use that one? Um, do people know about this? It's kind of, you're, as, as someone is teaching a class with uh, they're looking to video game-ish looking thing where you have simulated students and as they're doing things the students will do student-like stuff and you're sort of teaching the teacher how to do that. The one that I saw that that seemed fairly popular there's actually a, a one human controlling all of the students and so there's it's not really AI behind it it's not artificial intelligence driving the students it's actually a a person, but that is not, you're, you're really paying a person to do it, so. so. It's, it's uh, I forget the name of the company. Are you but, talking about yeah. Class Insight? Is that what it's called? Or something uh, like that? I don't know, this is a private, is that some conference where I saw a talk on it, so that's all I know. <laughs> Cool. What are some other things people are looking for? Um, thanks for uh, engaging and letting us know what you guys are interested in. And it seems like maybe all the questions and comments for today. So, um, and we're coming up on time anyway. So, right. thank you again. Oh, go ahead, David. All right. Right. Feel free to contact us if you have any other questions or if you some idea pops up that you think we might be good partners for. Yeah, absolutely. Please, please reach out. And um, just so you know, let me share the website. And uh, let's see if I can get back to my slide deck here. So that was the demonstration. And just so you know, here's the uh website for open simon and the next webinar will be on november 15th um, i'm targeting something around ctat for that uh, so look for that and, and sign up and come to that uh, you can find all the recordings for these webinars as well on our open simon site uh, so explore it a little bit and find find what you're looking for and contact us we're always open to um, comments feedback ideas and uh, partners for for various things so let us know what you're what you're wanting to work on and maybe we can find others who are interested in the same thing so thank you again uh david and sandy really appreciate the uh, demonstration you gave and the conversation and uh goodbye everyone thanks See ya. thanks everyone bye